Hello, in this video we're going to go over the problem of evaluating the sum of sine k where k goes from 1 to n and the angles are measured in radians. So anytime I'm dealing with sums and products of trigonometric functions, one method that I would use is using complex numbers and that requires these formulas. So the first formula is cosine theta plus i sine theta is e to the power of i theta. The next formula is sine of theta is equal to e to the power of i theta minus e to the power of negative i theta over 2i which is also the imaginary part of e to the power of i theta. Cosine of theta is given by the average of e to the power of i theta and e to the power of negative i theta. It is also the real part of e to the power of i theta. If you would like to know more about these formulas, I'm going to put a video on the upper right corner of the screen that you can check those out. How would that help us in solving the problem? We would replace each of the signs by the imaginary part of e to the power of i theta. In this case, theta is going to be k. So the sum of sine k would be the imaginary part of the sum of e to the power of i k. The way this would help is that sum of e to the power of i k is going to be a geometric sum with the common ratio of e to the power of i and the first term of e to the power of i as well. So if we use the formula for the geometric sum, we would get e to the power of i minus e to the power of n plus 1i, which is the term after the last term, over 1 minus the common ratio of e to the power of i. Now, in order to evaluate this one, one way would be to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator and then look at the imaginary part of this and that would be our answer. However, that would lead to chaos. The conjugate of the denominator, multiplying that, simpling it out, it would give you a huge mess. It is possible to solve it that way, but I prefer not to do those types of computation. Looking at the numerator, I have the difference of 2 e to the power of i thetas, and I know that sine is also the difference of 2 e to the power of i thetas. But in order to turn it into something like sine, I would need the angles to add up to 0. When I look at the angles in the numerator, the angles are 1 and n plus 1. In order to turn them into negative of each other, I'm going to factor the average of the exponents. In other words, I'm going to factor e to the power of i times n over 2 plus 1. That is the average of 1 and n plus 1. In the denominator, I would do the same. The exponents are 0 and i. I would factor e to the power of i over 2. That gives us e to the power of negative i, n i over 2 minus e to the power of n i over 2 in the numerator and e to the power of negative i over 2 minus e to the power of i over 2 in the denominator. Now I'm able to use the formulas for sine. Sine is e to the power of i theta minus e to the power of negative i theta over 2i. So the numerator becomes negative 2i sine of n over 2 and the denominator becomes negative 2i sine of 1 over 2. Canceling the negative 2i and looking at the imaginary part of e to the power of i n over 2 plus 1 over 2, I would get sine of n over 2 plus 1 over 2 sine of n over 2 over sine of 1 over 2 and that would be my final answer. If you like this video make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video and let me know if you have a different solution to this problem. I will see you in another video.